This is a slide on evoked potentials. As an introduction, evoked potentials are electrical signals that are used to monitor the functional integrity of certain neural structures intraoperatively during the procedure. The different types of evoked potentials include brainstem auditory evoked potentials, abbreviated as BAEP, motor evoked potentials, shown here, MEP, um, SSEPs, somatosensory evoked potentials, and visual evoked potentials, VEP. Anesthetic agents can have significant effects on the latencies and amplitudes of these waveforms. In general, volatile anesthetics have a pretty pronounced effect, uh, whereas IV anesthetics have less of an effect. Nitrous oxide has also been shown to decrease the amplitude of um, the SSEP and MEP um, signals. So it's, it's important to be aware of the effects of anesthetics when choosing anesthetics, um, when doing a procedure that requires these evoked potentials. Now let's get into the tables themselves. The brainstem auditory evoked potential has a stimulus that starts out as an acoustic signal, and it is then transferred to the BAEP electrode placed on the scalp. The pathways that it monitors starts in the cochlea, then goes through the cochlear nerve, through the cochlear nucleus, that's cranial nerve, um, eight is the cochlear nerve, to the superior olivary complex, the lateral lemniscus, the inferior colliculus in the midbrain, to the medial genticulate body, and the auditory cortex. So all of these are monitored with a brainstem auditory evoked potential. The relevant surgeries here are posterior fossas surgeries, where this, um, this nerve pathway can be damaged. The effect of inhaled anesthetics for auditory potentials is minimal. Motor evoked potentials have a stimulus that starts as a magnetic stimulation or transcranial electrical stimulation of the motor cortex. The evoked potential is then recorded from the muscles. The pathway monitored here starts at the motor cortex to the brainstem to the descending motor pathways to the peripheral nerves um, down to where you're recording it in the muscles. Relevant surgeries here are spinal surgeries. Inhaled anesthetics tend to have an effect on motor evoked potentials. They tend to decrease the amplitude and increase the latency. The total intravenous anesthesia is a preferred route for these procedures, but you can use inhaled anesthetics up to 0.5 mac. Somatosensory evoked potentials is next. The electrical stimulus here is applied to the peripheral nerve, and the SSEP is recorded from the brain or spinal cord. In the upper extremity, that's the median or ulnar nerve. In the lower extremity, it's the posterior tibial nerve. Pathways monitored here are the peripheral nerve, the dorsal root ganglion, and the posterior column of the spinal cord. Relevant surgeries here are cardiovascular, endovascular, and intracranial surgeries, as well as spinal surgeries, like in the motor potentials. Um, anesthetics here have a similar effect to the motor potentials. You have decreased amplitude and increased latency. You can actually use MAC up to 0.1 in these somatosensory evoked potentials without um, too much of an issue. Visual evoked potentials are the last one on this table. These uh, usually start with a light flash or a pattern stimulus into the eye, and they eventually go to the visual evoked potential electrode on the visual cortex of the brain. The pathway monitored is the retina, the optic nerve, that's cranial nerve two, optic chiasm, optic radiations, and occipital cortex. These are of course relevant in ophthalmic surgeries, and the inhaled anesthetics have a similar effect, uh, decreased amplitude and increased latency, less of an effect than on the motor and sensory evoked potentials. Um, these were the two summary points we made earlier. Anesthesia has the biggest effects on these two rows, and inhalational drugs have a greater effect on neuromonitoring than IV drugs. Here's a survey of the different anesthetics and their specific effects with some comments here. For inhalational agents, isoflurane, sevoflurane, desflurane, you'll have decreased uh, sensory amplitude, a decreased motor amplitude. Um, sensory amplitude, we usually said, goes up to 1 mac, and motor usually goes up to 0.5 mac without any significant issues. Propofol and nitrous oxide have similar effects on the amplitudes. Um, nitrous oxide is similar to isoflurane, and it's actually synergistic when combined with halogenated agents. So if you use these two together, you'll expect an even greater decrease in sensory or motor amplitudes. Propofol, um, again, similar to the other ones up here. Um, the sensory and motor potentials are usually recorded at anesthetic doses, but the motor evoked potential may be lost at high doses. Barbiturates, again, have a similar effect, similar to propofol. Um, there are limited studies that show barbiturate use in motor evoked potentials. 
opioids tend to have minimal effect on evoked potential amplitude, um, which is kind of nice. You could usually um, use them, use opioids at even high doses, and have no problems with the sensory and motor evoked potentials. Atomidate and ketamine have kind of an interesting effect where they increase the amplitude at some doses. So atomidate um, at very, very low doses tends to have an increased effect on the sensory and motor evoked potentials, but then those amplitudes decrease as you use more atomidate. Ketamine uh, has minimal effect um, in general, but it can have a slight increase in your sensory and motor evoked potentials at low doses. Benzodiazepine has minimal effect on the sensory evoked potential. Um, and when you get to higher doses of benzodiazepines, they can have a prolonged decrease of the motor evoked potential uh, at higher doses. Dexmedetomidine has minimal effect on the sensory evoked potentials, but like benzodiazepine can have a decrease in amplitude at higher doses on the motor evoked potential. Lidocaine lastly has a minimal effect on either the sensory or the motor um, evoked potentials, and it can be used as an intravenous supplement in both. I hope this review of evoked potentials was helpful, and thank you for listening.